Hello everyone, this is Christina Wallace and welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time, thanks for joining and on this channel I fairly regularly publish tutorials on how to make lifelike flowers out of cold porcelain or sugar. As some of you already know, I started making my own molds and so because apple trees are about to start blossoming soon, I wanted to use an existing apple blossom mold to see if I like using it and hopefully get a little bit of inspiration. And so, yes, um, just to add, this video today is sponsored by Skillshare, an online teaching platform. We will come back to that in a bit, but for now, let's jump in and see what we can do with this apple blossom recreation. Okay, so today we're going to start our flower with making the middle for the little apple blossom. Here's the wire. I'm going to cut it at an angle. This one is actually some kind of a finger care, like finger skin care, little pliers. They're not even flower pliers. They're fantastic for cutting wire. So the wire I've cut here just now, it was, I think, uh, gauge 26, but I ended up using a thinner one throughout, 28 or even thinner. doesn't need to be very thick. I would, I would say go for 28 because you're going to double it up, but 26 is doable as well, just not as easy to maneuver. And here I have thread, just, just the first thread that um, I found in my very limited thread drawer. And it's quite thin, don't make it too thick. And what I do, I um, kind of put it through a reasonably thin layer of craft glue, just to stiffen it up a little bit and make it a little bit more pliable. You know, you, you know if you put, add glue to something, it makes it easier to bend it and keep it in shape, just in case I need to do it. And here we go, now it's dry. It dries immediately, by the way. And um, yeah, I'm rather liking it, how easy this whole process was. And now I'm going to loop it over my two quite large fingers, 10 times. So if you have very thin, delicate and wonderful fingers, maybe use three fingers, I don't know, play by ear. And also depends on your, uh, on your vena as well and on how large you want to keep your petals. So here we go, so I've looped it and now I'm going to double up my wire exactly through the middle. Right, here we go, just like so. And now we're doubling it up and going to tie the wire over. So you're going to be covering it with either flower tape which is what I ended up doing, even though normally I finish it off as, per, as for the cold porcelain. In this case, it worked out to be a very long video, so I ended up finishing it off just with um, flower tape, like the sugar flowers. But in any case, it, it pays to keep your wire as thin as possible or as even as possible. So if you start twisting it, then it's harder to cover at the end, but I'm kind of rushing ahead of myself. So cut this off as straight as you can, all right? And then you can kind of keep trimming it if you need to. But if you cut it straight, it kind of gives you a nice little finish like this. Yeah, this process is very, very easy. It's, you can make it thicker, by the way, if you do more loops, but um, this seemed plenty enough. And in here, I'm just securing it at the bottom with a bit of cold porcelain, nice and easy, like so. All right. And again, this one is just the same craft glue. It's quite thin. If you want it to be, to set quicker, that glue, you could dry it out a little bit and then you separate these little strands with um, with a needle and voila and here goes my middle I am not trying to infringe the copyright owed by mother nature here in fact I'm one of those artists who tries to um, give a little bit of a gothic undertone to my flowers make them slightly stylized but here they are 
And talking of copyright, several days ago, a few of you got in touch with me on Instagram saying that someone has copied the cake that I've painted and uh, posted on social media a few years ago without mentioning my name or my input in any capacity, really. So, yeah, there it was. Um, and I got in a half and a path and I posted a picture of my cake and then their cake on my Instagram stories saying, well, I don't care, but there it goes. What do you think about this? And uh, yeah. Then I slept on it and actually I had a complete turnaround. Um, the dust, the emotional dust has settled and I've realized that actually I have posted a video, a step-by-step -step video, how to paint the cake and how to make a flower for it and how to assemble that flower. And um, so I was not bothered. If anything, I was embarrassed about um, feeling so emotional about it the day before. The whole episode, though, brought it on my radius through personal experience, just how important and emotional the copyright issue is for an artist, which brings us to Skillshare, an online learning community that has countless number of very good quality videos on every imaginable subject that is used by thousands and thousands and thousands of people worldwide and who is sponsoring this video today. So quite a few copyright videos here on Skillshare. I picked three which address digital copyright and also complement each other really well. So this first one is by a guy who publishes online content for a living and had to deal with people plagiating, copying or simply stealing his content over and over again. And so very clearly he outlines what to do if that happens to you. The second video is by a lady whose licensed artwork is mass-produced to retail market. So that's her slant on copyright, which I find quite fascinating in itself. But also, she brings up a very interesting aspect of copyright, where someone in error or maliciously accuses you in infringing on their copyright, basically saying that it's you who is copying them when that is, in fact, not at all the case. And then she addresses how to protect yourself from such a situation. Last but not least, a short but very useful course packed with advice and guidance from the lawyer who is currently practicing copyright law in England and Wales. So as you can see, Skillshare goes beyond simply saving you time by compiling and condensing and well presenting the already existing free information, it also gives you an access to um, a specific information that could be very, very useful and not necessarily available out there at such an affordable price. Today, Skillshare is offering first 500 of my viewers two months free subscription to its services absolutely free. If you want to sign up to this generous offer, you need to go to the link below and sign up using that. And depending on the type of subscription you take out, the prices begin with mere £7 a month. Okay, so on this occasion, I've decided to add a little bit of cellulose-based clay to my cold porcelain, which is FMM fan clay, this one. is the same as Deco and Moderna Soft. It makes the mix whiter and also more responsive to veins, which is the idea for me to try out a vein and see if I like using veins on such small flowers. So I need five petals for each little blossom and I'm going to make them freehand. I think it would be nice to show the freehand way of making them and I'm not a huge freehander um, at any rate and yet I've managed to do it. So yeah, it's available, this simple technique virtually to anyone really. Along with my vena capacity, I'm um, doing five petals at a time and now, um, as you can see, I dry them a little bit, air dry them a bit before actually inserting it into this vena because my clay is reasonably fresh, so it's 
still a little bit sticky and this vein as you can see is very very dramatic and textuous so chances are if I um, won't dry my petals out a little bit a little bit before putting them in they are going to stick and get cut by this particular vena which is a vena I got somewhere on kind of a Russian Etsy place and uh, yeah and I'm dying to recreate it really dying so make sure that all the edges are cleared just like I just showed you so they're all inside I mean my freehand was not amazing so I just kind of stick it in and would make them come out looking really squished up you could get tidier with it but then you probably would then need cutters or maybe even weighing your individual portions for each petal I'm not sure I haven't done any weighing 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 whatever for any of the petals so far I'm sure I will arrive to that madness some point in my flower career so now they sat in that uh, vena for about five to ten minutes so if I if I'd have gotten them out straight away it they would have gotten straightened out but actually if you can it's always a good idea to leave your stuff in a vena for a little bit because then the shape sets or has a lot better a chance of setting especially with a little shape like this it's a lot more friendly and less fussy obviously So what can I say about using a vena for such a small blossom? I absolutely love it actually. Use a layer, use quite a thick, in comparison of course, a layer of clay for this because then it shapes nicer and you see a lot more texture. And shape it like this to attach. Um, I found that looks really nice but obviously play and um, do something to your own taste. This vein didn't allow me to have too much room for pulling out a chunk of clay and attaching it to the base. I, I found that the petals were quite sturdy and quite light at the same time so I didn't need it but if you do leave the base a little bit thicker and play around with your making of petals. And here we go, I'm ready for an action. I'm going to attach it together with a thick clay now. Yeah, much easier to make actually so far than I anticipated. Very, very nice therapeutic even flower to make, I'd say. So if you manage not to over dry your petals, so roll them thick or maybe work quicker with them, you could do this little cup at the end of each petal and it does look pretty cool you must admit but if you're gonna start doing it do it on all the petals or maybe on one particular uh, flower because they look slightly odd when some of them are cupped and some of them aren't or at least that's what how I felt so now we're going to start attaching all the petals um, it, they're not wired because for cold porcelain you really wouldn't need them wired and for sugar possibly it would be beneficial not sure so yeah just try to attach them in the way that you like in the way that you like them try to give them some movement by twisting your petals and attaching them say three of them slightly lower and two of them on the top or maybe the other way around there isn't any particular order to making it you can find the picture online and just copy it um, I find that making the bottom of each petal slightly pointy and thinner does add to a beautiful elegant finish of this kind of a flower so yeah because I've left uh, the petals in the in the mold 
uh, while I was making the next lot of petals or maybe the middle, something like this, about for about 10 minutes. All this fiddling I'm doing with petals now, trying to arrange them in a, a shape that I like, um, it doesn't interfere with the petals and the crunchy scrunched up shape is still there, which is pleasing me incredibly loads even if I can't say that in English because it's grammatically incorrect. Anyhow, these are my flowers and I'm very happy with them and actually they are quite easy to make. And um, yeah, just hang them upside down to dry. This is what I do anyway, just to prevent gravity. And now we're going to move on to foliage. So if you look at the finish of apple leaves, you see this serrated edge. It's a lot finer than rose, for example, as in this metal one. And even though this particular cutter, it was a rose cutter that I've used uh, for teaching in VNA. You know, I don't know if you've seen, remember that picture, but yeah, there, were, there was a rose with two rose leaves. But I think it would suit for apple leaf really, leaf really, really nicely here. So this is what I'm going to use. And so look at me cutting this out. I've left the middle a little bit thicker. I mean, the whole apple leaf is quite meaty and easy to make. Uh, I'm adding a bit of petal base to it because it's so fine it would be actually quite difficult to pop the clay out especially the thick layer of clay because it's quite a low low cutter but anyway I'll do my best I put petal base on it as well to to make it easier to pop out because if you don't clear the edges here in particular really well then it's definitely not going to give you a nice tidy result but yeah it's looking fine and um, let's wire it. So it's quite a meaty, heavy leaf. So we're going to use wire gauge, um, I think it was 24. And do you see how I twist it? Because the paper that sits around this wire, it's about to, it was about to come off. So you have to twist it in the right direction. And it also really, really helps to to wire the leaf without it poking out and all the rest of it. So here we go, we wired it and um, we're going to and this vena, it's not an upper leaf vena, it's just something that looked to be the closest to it. So it's very very important to align your leaf correctly uh, throughout the vena, especially on a vena like this which doesn't have a boundary around it so it's likely is likely to move from place to place. But I am going to um, do some troubleshooting on how to correct some leaves if they didn't get vein veined properly or precisely, as precisely as you'd like them to. And then you can just curl it up, and once it's curled in the shape that in the shape that you like, you could dry it on a foam. I've um, forgotten to include a foam on this picture or picture of a drying leaves, but yeah, just position it in the shape that you could even hang it off the table, really. So I have always found leaves quite tricky to make actually and there are a few different ways of making it but on this occasion I just put it through the middle like you do it in sugar tradition. So I'm going to show you how to fix this because everything about this leaf I really like except for obviously it doesn't align very well. So yeah see does okay in the back and uh, in the front it's going to be doing okay in a minute with a little help from me right just pinch it at the top like so and at the bottom it doesn't align at the bottom so i make a new groove as easy as that you could just save yourself a lot of repetitive uh, shenanigans you know to get all your leaves aligning nicely 
And here's another trick I want to show you. Works very well with cold porcelain and, sorry about the focus. Yeah, works very well for cold porcelain and may work with sugar. So when it's slightly dry or your clay is slightly used, just stretch it. If it's thick enough, the shape will just nicely change. And here I'm going to make some calyxes throughout for all of my uh, flowers, about six flowers, not that many. So little calyxes, it was a set of three. I have no idea, it was one of those makes that a few years ago they were everywhere on eBay, probably still are. And I never had any use for it until now, so I'm very pleased I've kept them because I have thrown away quite a few pieces of my equipment which I didn't like anymore. So here we go, the clay is slightly on the dry side, I left it sitting around for about 5-10 minutes and now I'm just curling it in. You could use PME tool for this, I have used metal tool because it tends to stick to cold porcelain a lot less. You can pinch the very ends or leave them roundy and dry them um, in a 3D shape so that when you attach them they look nice you'll see it in a minute but yeah make sure you make little holes in them because otherwise it would be a lot harder to thread them through and here we go it's a um, little baby flower and it has its own calyx isn't it cute so if your background is sugar, um, then I just want to mention that for cold porcelain it's traditional to cover wire with clay as well as the actual shape made out of clay. And so I'm going to demonstrate how to uh, cover mini pieces like this little bit of stem that is coming out of the leaf and then goes into the main stem because this video is getting quite long and so I am not going to be able to cover making the stem, covering the stem, the main stem uh, with clay because that's in itself is a whole video's worth kind of work and I might make a separate video on that but I will show you the principle of um, covering uh, wire with clay just so that I show off this nice little element of working with cold porcelain for those of you especially who haven't seen it before and um, I use a cover stems in most of my videos so if you I'll try to link up rows uh, covering rose stem that kind of goes into more of a coverage detail of a bigger stem in particular but anyway so basically uh, you just <laughs> you just add a little bit of clay on your stem on your wire and hold on for dear life if it's your first time but yeah just jump into it and practice using metal tool if you can get hold of one of those little metal tools it does help or just your fingers or maybe a flower shaped tool and try to make it as straight as possible and then wash it off with water on a on a brush for smoothness and it will get the whole process will get easier um, as with time basically So to add color to my leaves, I use oil paints. They're not smelly, they're very nice to use and actually the brushes, you can just wash them off with, with a bit of soap. Don't be afraid to use them. Uh, oil paints are beautiful for some effects, um, including this really. I think that foliage in this particular composition it's really, it really is half the battle. And this particular technique, when you use the brush to just apply a sparse amount of paints, is called dry brushing, <laughs> quite predictably. And yeah, so you do keep the brush quite dry with most of the colors, especially if you add colors to 
two petals. But for something like this, uh, for leaves, uh, because the background is quite light, I, sp I specifically kept it light so that I could see the contrast on the back. But this paint is, it happened to be see-through, so it has a square that's clear. So it doesn't cover the color completely. And I do quite like that, but um, I had to add a little bit more color to kind of compensate for it. And now I'm going to just add slightly darker colors at the bottom, just to add a little bit of accent to my leaves. It's very basic, nothing sophisticated, just slightly darker colors, uh, which, um, which go at the bottom of the leaf. To kind of mimic shade I suppose. So if you want me to list all these colors do please leave a comment in the comment section and then I can take them out and list them. It will give me a little bit of motivation. Now this one is spray to spray your paints when you've applied them to leaves. Okay well simply because oil paint doesn't dry very quickly and that really helps. And here I'm using just a clear glue. On the inside, although I've demoed clear glue, on the inside a thin layer of um, the white, uh, white glue. You know the craft glue would probably work better because this clear one didn't, didn't hold the fluffy bits very well when it's dried they, some of them fell off so this uh, white stuff is called flock and you can buy it on ebay you can also buy it from the, one of this uh, from etsy from russian sites that i've mentioned earlier on and um yeah you just apply it as evenly as you can be a judge of how much you want to apply and voila quite a nice effect really isn't it so as i've mentioned this video is um, kind of getting so so long that i will not be including the entire assembly in it simply because um, i think i might take it all apart at some point and perhaps do a separate video on assembly alone because it's um yeah it would be quite a job with so much detail going on and also it would be interesting to make um perhaps a realistic stem i'd have to think it through so i'm going to leave it as is uh these are the steps of assembly um in case you're interested to have a look here we go just on the fly a few pictures and so here we go our video is finally um, ended I'm um, thanks to everyone maybe two or three of you who stayed to the end that is lovely of you and I will be seeing you uh, quite soon with another tutorial this time it will be tulip have a lovely weekend